how to blur the edge of shapes, as well as type in Photoshop. I'm using CC220. Select Custom Shape Tool. Then go to the top, select Shape, Shape Option, and set the fill color. And also set the shape. Now the presets in 220, slightly different from 219, 218. But you should be able to find the arrow set, either via Legacies or via the standard Presets panel. And draw that shape. So you've got your arrow design. I could have selected any other custom shape, maybe a circle. Go to Layer Menu, Layer Style, and go to Stroke. And see so straight away, you've got your blurred design. Now that's live, you can change it at any point. You can modify the size. You can see the side there, it's obviously slightly hidden, but you assume as you move the size, at the side you can see it, yeah, I'll just move it out so you can see it slightly better. You've got the blur in there, so you can increase the size or decrease it. Now you can use center or inside or outside, up to you. I think center or outside is fine. Also go for gradient and go for shape burst in the style. That's the key one, shape burst. And set the gradient you want to use. Now I've got reverse there. You can see if I click there, it will change it. So I'm going to keep that active. But you might find in yours, it's the other way around. Now you can click on the gradient and you can edit it. And now when you go into this, you'll see the gradient has one at the top there, a stop. Set to 100%, 100% opacity. The stop at the other end, that white stop, is 0% opacity. That's what you want. And 0% there. And you've got your solid color, the same color as the shape. So you've got pink shape, you want pink there. And that's the color. And of course you can change it. So if you've got black shape, make the color in that color section black. Click OK. And you can now see your shape with the blur. And it's live. So if you modify that design, you go to like the direct selection tool and tweak the shape, the blur is still attached to that shape. So you can move the points there. And again, you can still see the blur. Now, obviously, it depends on the size of document. So if you've got a really big document, and you've got a very tiny shape, you obviously will have to change the size of the blur. Because obviously you won't be able to see it. Obviously in this fairly small 1,600 by 1,600 document, I don't have to go too far to create a blur around that shape. And you can remove it, obviously the shape as well. I'm going to show you a background. I'm just going to quickly create a background. I haven't got a background at the moment. So I'm just going to add it and show the shape with the background. Because I've got a layer, I can't add it at this point. So I'm just quickly going to go and create a layer. So layer and new, new layer. Click OK and add a layer. Just going to be a gradient, very basic gradient. Could be an image, it could be anything else. It's going to be a gradient in this case. And I can add another shape, of course, on top of that gradient. And of course, I could move the shape that's now below and not visible as well. But I'm just going to quickly create a new shape. Just as easy to show you with a new shape. And again, what you can do, again, go to the layer, layer menu, and down to layer style, and go down to stroke again. Now, stroke may be in a different position, depending on your version of Photoshop. I'm used to actually being right down the bottom. So I often go down the bottom think, oh no, they've moved it to the top. But it's at the top now, very close to the top. I'm not certain why they had to rearrange it all. Personally, I think they should have left it in alphabetical order. So you can modify the size and you can see the effect there. And again, because the design I'm using is pink, obviously the gradient is still pink. And you can always, if you wish, add a style. Now, say if you've got a like, nice style that you want, you want to save it, you can just click there, new style, and that will be added to the styles panel. 
so you can use it at a later point. It's not always needed, as it's fairly quick to create this very basic start, but it's handy if you want it to be there. And then you've got your stroke added there. And so you've got this blurring effect. Now there's styles there, you've got a styles panel. And of course the layers panel is a useful one, and that's all via the window menu. But say you want to change the colour. Just go up there to the fill. And change it. Maybe go for black. Now of course a pink around the edge doesn't look so great as a blur around the edge. Doesn't blur it at all, in fact. So what you need to do, of course, is to go and change the colour. And you can do that, just go to the stroke section. Library, for some weird reason, mysteriously appeared there. Just get rid of it. You can double click the stroke entry and that will bring up the setting. I don't know why panels suddenly mysteriously appear. It's a very odd feature of Photoshop. Suddenly, suddenly you're working and suddenly libraries appear. Why? Anyway, who knows? Click on there again and you can change the pink, obviously, to black. And then just what you can do, just go to the color there, click the pink one, and then you've got this little, obviously, color picker. And you can select, obviously, you could go to the color and change to black just as easily as well without using the color picker. But you've got now a black stop, black color stop. It could, of course, be green if the shape is green or blue. And you can, of course, continue to modify size and all those sort of things as well. But you can also change the stop. You can crunch up the 0% opacity right to the thing. So you get it fairly sharp. But there's still a blurriness in that. It's still a subtle blur. So you can change that. You can also change the midpoint to squeeze it the other way. And then you can also move, crunch it up that way and so on, to make it a more rounded shape. You can tweak it in numerous ways just by moving them backwards and forwards and just trying and experimenting. And of course, you can always add an intermediary stop if you wish. Maybe uh, to add a slight subtle variation in the blurring. You can experiment, but that's what you can do with the gradient stops, the colour stops there. So once you're happy with that, of course, you can, of course, save that, that grain. You can go and click the new button or you can click OK. And that's what you want. So you've got your blurriness still associated with your shape. And it could be a square. It could be a, and then another thing you could do, of course, before you do that, come out there, you can always save, save the style, new style. So you've got it stored away in the styles if you want to use it at a later point. And you can always go to the plus in that stroke to add a new stroke. So you could add two or three layers of strokes, create some interesting variations. And of course, the shape can still be modified. You can always go to the direct selection tool or you can use maybe the curvature tool and modify that shape. Select a point, yeah, select that point, and then you can tweak it. And the blurring effect, the blurred shape will change it's live. You can go and modify it again. Modify the shape. You can modify the effect. And of course, you can apply other shapes. And what else you can also do, you can add some other shapes. And I'm just going to add some circles here quickly on top. And then, of course, what I can do, I can select all of the shapes. I could do that via the panel, layers panel. Also, I want to remove the background. Or at least maybe not remove it, lock it. So it just make sense it's selected and then go to the layer menu and lock it. Otherwise, it will you quite easily select all of it. And I don't want to do that. I want the background layer to be unmoving. So now I can quickly select. And I could do it again, like I say, layers panel, just as easy. So I select all the shapes. That's just me being lazy, actually. I should have done it the other way around. Just select and via the panel. Anyway, layer menu, and then go down to combine shapes.
and then you can use subtract front shapes. Now you see then what happens, the effect is lost. You might not want that. Well, I don't want it either. So what I can do, you can go to styles and because you've saved the style, you can bring it over because it's over tucked away. You can go and click on that style. Maybe that some weird reason I didn't save that one. But you can click on the styles and bring it back quickly. And of course, it would help if I've actually got the one that's got the black. But I haven't. So layer menu. And again, go to layer style. And you can quickly change the color. Stroke. Click on there. And we'll double click, but click just as easily. It will bring up the panel. Make that black. And click OK. And then you've got. The circles that have been added to the shape are also blurred as well. And again, now this time I will save the style. Click OK. And you can see the style there now in the panel. And you can do this with any of the other shapes as well. Circles, etc. Rectangles. And so on and so on. So if I create a circle shape, obviously this time it's pink, not black. So now when I apply black, it actually creates a nice shadow effect more than anything. But I can change the color, of course, to black via the fill command. And then you've got your blurred circle, which, of course, you can then duplicate by holding down the ultra option key, resizing, changing, modifying, maybe using direct selection tool, or curvature tool and modifying shape. And again, the live effect is still passed through. Of course, it will come up with a good old dialogue telling you that you're changing it from a regular. And so you've got your design there. And again, you can always go to the stroke over there, double click on that and change the settings if you wish. But key thing is shape burst. You can change the size. Also, you can change the position. Maybe go to outside instead of center. Now I'm going to show type this time. Because you can do it obviously with shapes. Whoops, don't know how to spell either now. Yitta pipe, whatever that is. Sometimes it does that. Those glip, it just comes up and just puts another, and you think, weird. Maybe it's my keyboard. Right. Type. I'm going to now blur that. Press return once you've resized. And what you can do, you can, of course, now I could just as easily go to the Styles panel and add that style I've already created. Go to Stroke again. And you can see there, the color there. Now you could use center for position, outside, etc. You can change the size, maybe make it more. Now you can go too far. And you, if you go, sometimes when you go one way with inside, etc., you end up suddenly the shape, the color is lost and everything else. It's just, so you have to experiment with this, but you can try out different things. You can make it thinner, maybe make it too thin sometimes, the type, by using changes there. And you can change the color, just go into that stop at the end. So you've now got your blurred type. And you can change the color via that as well. Click OK. And again, you can do all the other things with the stops, squeeze them, change them, modify them, and you can apply it like that. And again, it's still live, so you can double click on the stroke entry in the last panel and change it again. Not only that, you can also change the type. Of course, it's still live. You can put ABC, one, two, three, five, six, seven, eight, nine, whatever, change the size, and then you can still have your blurred type. And if you change the color, of course, you end up with this, this edge. So now, of course, what you need to do is go again over to the stroke and change the color. And layer, layer style, you can go there, stroke, do it that way as well, just as easy, but double click is just as easy as well. And change the various settings there. Again, you can change the size. And you see what you can end up with, losing most of the type thereby the black is completely wiped out you increase the size too much but you can click on there and change it to black again use the color picker or just change it to black 
normally click OK, click OK, and then you've got your black there. So you can make it a lot thicker looking, bolder. It's got a slight subtle blur to your type and you can change it to outside if you wish as well. But the key thing is shape burst. That's the key one. It's always a pity that it's not other types of shape burst where it sort of goes a different angle to the, the shape. I'd love to see that. And maybe a repeat gradient, of course, would be even better. So you could create all kinds of weird and wonderful designs. And of course, a repeat gradient would be really wonderful in this as well. However, that feature is not available. And the only way you could do that is add multiple stops. So you can gain, just vary the position of the stops. Just move them around and you can change how the blurring is applied to that set of letters. And it's still live. So you can change it, you can change the text, maybe go for a slightly smaller text, you can do a whole load of other things as well. And of course you can duplicate the design, apply styles, just click on the styles to apply it that way. Or just go to the other one. There's another option. And of course you can always save styles, create a whole range of different blurring styles, or maybe thin the text very quickly by using that. Hope you found this tutorial of interest. Please subscribe to the Graphic Extras channel. Always adding many, many tutorials about Photoshop, Illustrator, Affinity Photo, and many others. Please add some comments, always appreciated. A dislike or like. Thank you much.